Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Looking for something to do. Let's go to BibleGateway.com and look at the verse of the day. See if I give us some inspiration. If it don't, let's call on our Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, asking that you will open up the communication pathway so that we can hear you and be inspired by you and your word so that we can communicate, so we can learn, so that we can um, 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 use your word or have your word as guidance in our lives. In your son's name we pray. Amen. So be it. All right, so looking for the verse of the day here. There it is. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's Philippians 3 and 20. I think we want to go there, guys. Let's look at Philippians 3 and 20. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and do the whole Philippians thing. Okay, I'm going to let y'all go ahead and get started because it takes a little minute for him to get warmed up. But I'll catch up. Philippians 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. Chapter 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more circumcised the eighth day, of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. All right, y'all. That was uh, Philippians 3. Let me jump over here before you start again. Uh, let me see. No, I think we got him program right. He's not trying to start again. All right. Let's look back in here. Y'all want to take a look back in here? See what all he talked about? He says, changed our vile body that is fashioned into that is fashioned into his glorious body. So, 
you know this is one of the things that we look forward to is a change in our body this kind of change that he's talking about here um, look at he says for our conversation is in heaven now what does that mean our conversation is in heaven now we learn in the third testament that this means that our conversation is in spirit that our conversation is you know uh, and through our conscious with him you know as the Holy Spirit you know communicating from within you know that Leviticus that Exodus kind of um, uh, tabernacle having been built not with man's hands but with the, the hands of our father inside our hearts and we praise the Lord for the rain whose end is destruction we're going backwards here it's the first time we ever went backwards before but look at it says uh, whose God is their belly he's talking about us y'all our God is our belly it make us you know we follow it you know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't matter. There's one day in the year when the, when, the, when the scripture tells us to fast. And up until this point, we've always thought that that meant to abstain from food. So how many of us actually ever did that? I, mean, like, I can count the number of times in my lifetime I fast. You mean to tell me I'm supposed to have been doing this periodically? He says, uh, for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. I mean, who are the enemies? Let's find out. Brethren, be followers together in me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. So, okay, so we're supposed to use them as an example. This may be harder going backwards. We might not try this again. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing talking about the laws of the lord here guys um there's a lot of people who don't still to this day don't understand that we're supposed to be following the commandments not even a 10 you know they don't even believe we're supposed to follow the 10 they like you know we're supposed to be wilding out let us therefore as many as be perfect which means be complete he's talking about be complete there um and 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 meaning in the law complete in the understanding of the lord and doing what he wants to do he says Thus minded, and if anything be otherwise minded, shall God reveal even this unto you. So God is the revealer. The Father, the Creator, is the revealer. Uh, the revealer. I press forward to the mark for the prize of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Now this is what he's talking about. The high calling, I, I believe, would be to, um, um, who is this talking? This is uh, Philippians. So I believe this is Paul talking. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I believe this is Paul talking. What prize was Paul, you know, reaching for? Hmm. Um, I don't know. We have to think about that. Might have to do a whole new show on that one. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Uh, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Now, he's giving us some hints there. You know, we kind of called it the mid middle. See that comma there? We kind of called it there. So maybe that'd help us out if we were to reread it. But let's go on. Not as though I had already attained, either we were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended in Christ. Woo! I don't know, I might be listening to the rain too much. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, and I could be messing it up, guys, so read along with me. I, I apologize when I do so. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conf conformable unto his death. Okay. Now, the resurrection, we have to understand what the resurrection is. There's a lot of people thinking that we're about to, you know, there's people about to come up out of the graves. You know, there's a lot of people scared, you know. they thinking that, you know, that, that guy wasn't in too great a shape when we put him in that hole. He'd been there a while. We about to, he about to come back up and start walking around, you know, and, and that's kind of some spooky stuff. But what he talks about, what he's talking about is our spirit being resurrected, our spirit being resurrected, not necessarily our bodies. Or, you know, our bodies, he said, was ashes to ashes, dust to dust. But he's talking about our, our spirit, so it's not too not too bad. Let's go on. Uh, Yell, doubtful, I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I am suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Yeah, but the thing is, you get it back. Whatever you lost, whatever he lost for the Lord, he gets back a hundred fold. So, you know what I'm saying? He, he wouldn't, he, and shouldn't be complaining, probably, um, you know, wouldn't be, you know, couldn't be complaining if it wasn't for the fact that we had to read these words for our own edification. Let's go. 
For what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Okay. Um, kind of backwards there. We can keep going. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Okay. So he was persecuting the church, right? And he was con concerning, concerning zeal, he was persecuting the church. This is Paul, you know, he actually killed a lot of people in the early church. And but he says, touching the righteousness which is the law, blameless. I mean, he ain't broke no law, you know. <laughs> he didn't, you know. Some of the stuff that you know people when they didn't un quite understand, you know, what was going on, and they may have, you know, did like old coach in the fight, start running off at the mouth. You know, people get the wrong idea and be like, instead of them saying, "Hey, did you really mean thus and so forth?" No, nah, they just got out the rocks and started hitting folk. You know what I'm saying? Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law of Pharisee. Okay, now this is this says a lot in this verse, right? You know, he circumcised the eighth day. Sure, that's big, you know. But look at it here. Uh, he was of the of the tribe of Benjamin, you know. So, yeah, he wasn't of Judah. So the only two tribes were Benjamin and Judah. So that's interesting. We can talk about that later. I'm, I'm not going to talk about it now. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he has whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Mm, yeah. See, this is Paul basically saying, hey, y'all back up off of me now. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm a, I'm a, I did a lot of stuff back in the day, but, you know, the same back in the day. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. See right here, he's telling you that he is already worshiping Christ in the flesh. Here it is, 2018, and we're still worshiping Christ in the material. He, our Paul, already letting you know he above us. You know, what I mean, we, we still worship him in the material. Every time, you know, we, you know, you know, feel the need to, you know, pull out a candle or look at a figure or figurine or a picture. Or even turn on the television to hear the word of the Lord. Or even hear some, you know, teacher. Even if you feel like the way, the only way for you to hear the Lord is, is to tune in old coach in the fight. That is material. You know what I'm saying? If you really want to hear from the Lord, guys, you talk to him from within. You find you a quiet spot. You know what I'm saying? You close, you, you, uh, uh, close your eyes and you start thinking and praying in, internal. No, don't even use your voice. He says, your words, he says, don't trust your words. And I'm putting this, I'm highly paraphrasing here. And I'm speaking Third Testament stuff too. But he says, don't allow your words to limit your conversation. Think about what you, what you want. He can decipher, he can understand it inside your thoughts more than your, you can inside your words. In other words, you, you don't have the words to always, you know, clarify what your prayer requests are. So, you know, don't, don't even try to use them. Just close it, close it, use it, talk internally. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of concision. Then I'd have to look that word up, concision, and see what it meant. Yeah, we're going to wrap this up. But let me jump over here and look that word up right quick. It says, concision, alternatively, brevity, iconicism, terseness, or conciseness. Okay, let me just read the definition is minimizing words while conveying an idea okay minimizing words while con conveying an idea it aims to enhance communication by eliminating redundancy without omitting a por important information okay now let's come back over here and see what it says he says beware of dogs beware of evil workers beware of the concision yeah what this is Okay, we're going to take his word for it. All right, we got that. We can back it up and look. Finally, okay, we're going to wrap it up here. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. All right, this is uh, Philippians, or that was Philippians. You guys can back it up and hear it again from the beginning. Um, if you like this kind of stuff, you know, give some type of like, some type of feedback. We'll do this, you know. We'll, we, we, we'll you know, we, we'll, we'll give you what you like, you know. You know, as long as it's the word, we give you whatever. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue.